Hey, how's it going? Uh, Peter Kleinhens here from Wild Wonder. And today I want to tell you all a little story. Um, I just got back from traveling to Oaxaca, Mexico. And while there, I had one of the most incredible experiences with wildlife I've ever had. Uh, and in particular, this was an experience with a bird. I'll give you a hint about what that bird was before we dive into the little story. Um, this is a bird that you've probably seen before. You've probably seen it at a zoo, maybe a pet store, hope not. But um, if you're really lucky, maybe you've even seen this bird in the wild. Uh, this bird is big, one of the largest birds um, of its kind, and is brightly colored. It's got green, it's got red, it's got blues. It can talk. And when you hear it uh, making its noise, it kind of sounds like this. <laughs> and it makes this kind of guttural squawking sound. This bird is a military macaw. It's a really cool species of macaw. Uh, military macaws range from Mexico to South America, but the Mexican variety, the Mexican subspecies is critically endangered. It's only found in a few populations. I was fortunate enough while traveling in Oaxaca, Mexico with my friend to visit uh, the largest remaining population in Mexico. We went to a place called Canyon El Sab Del Sabino, pardon, and let me share my screen. I'll, I'll show you what it was like. It was pretty wild. Um, we went to this canyon and here we go. Let's see here. This is what it looked like. It was this amazing 1600 foot deep canyon and it had these sheer limestone walls, kind of this cactus thorn scrub growing on top of it. And it was in the middle of nowhere. We had to go to this town that we had heard about and ask the police where the ecotourism office was. Uh, then we had to go to some guy's house, knock on his window, um, have the police interpret for us because my Spanish is awful. And the, the guy basically said, come back in an hour. So my friend and I went to the uh, local market, got a few beers and sat in the middle of the park drank a couple beers and sure enough, in an hour, uh, we were on our way. And so we, we drove this kind of bumpy back road, uh, then to a highway, and then we got to this canyon, kind of the mouth of this canyon, drove up, hiked up this hill, and long, long story short, we got to the edge of this incredible slice through the mountainside. And as we were walking up to the edge of the canyon, we heard our first wah, 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 and it was military macaws. And I was just, I, I cried. I mean, I was like cry, literally crying. Um, I've wanted to see macaws in the wild since I was like, maybe not that small, but pretty small. And it was just, I mean, it was unbelievable. And so we're, we're in this canyon and I'll show you a few pictures here. Um, hopefully you can see this. This is what we saw fly by. I mean, spectacular birds. These are, these are military macaws. It's that blue, that green, kind of like a yellowish green. I'll show you a couple of pictures here. Um, here's another one close up. Kind of out of focus, but you get the idea. They're beautiful birds and they're big. You know, they're, they're this big and, and they just fly right by. And why do you think they would be in a canyon? I mean, think about it, right? Like you don't attribute macaws with rock ledges. Well, the fact is this is a bird that's heavily poached and they're gone from most places because poachers cut down nest trees, these big old hollow trees, and steal the babies, sometimes killing the parents uh, for the pet trade. And so, as you can probably imagine, uh, poachers are not scaling these cliffs to, to get the eggs. You know, the, the macaws are relatively safe in this canyon. Uh, there's, there's, I think there were 200 or 300 that live in this canyon. And which is one of the largest populations in Mexico, like I said, and they're safe from poachers. And so anyway, we basically went to these vantage points on the edge of the canyon. And as the sun was slowly going down, more and more macaws came back to roost in their little caves in the cliffs. And I wanted to show you, um, I actually have, if I can find it, video. You can hear that little that's their social call where the pairs are communicating with each other look at it fly by i just love it 
I love it. Look at this. One more. They flew right by us. And it was just, um, I don't know, it was one of those, one of those experiences that you just never forget. You know, you never think you're going to see this in the wild. And there's like a critically endangered bird flying right by. Um, I did not take it for granted. I, I mean, I knew in the moment that this was a really amazing experience. And even our guide was moved by the experience. And he's seen it countless times. Um, what's cool, and the last thing I'll kind of mention is that uh, both sides of the canyon have a different community protecting them. So this is an example of community conservation where basically uh, a community has rallied around this resource and saying, hey, we're going to keep the poachers out. We're going to derive income from the ecotourists that come here and pay to see this natural spectacle. And by doing so, these parrots will be protected long term. Uh, this is how conservation should happen, folks. And I would encourage you all, if you do find yourselves in another country, to try to find an experience like this where your dollars can actively support the conservation and perpetuation of a rare species. Um, again, this is one of the coolest experiences of my entire life. Um, with wildlife. And I, I sincerely uh, hope that you get to experience something like this in your own life. And man, if you ever find yourself in Oaxaca, Mexico, uh, look up Canyon del Sabino and, and try to see these parrots for yourself. So thanks for, thanks for listening. And I hope, I hope you're interested in, in seeing this and, um, you know, perpetuating the conservation of endangered species like the military in the call. See ya.